This video shows how to get started with Yaskawa's Smart Panel HMI. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview of the process. Start a new Mavacon project and import the variables marked OPC from the controller. Connect buttons and edit boxes to these variables and adjust the properties. Test the functionality in the runtime simulation. Then set up the HMI to run the project. Now let's look at this in a little more detail. Here's the system and hardware I'm working with for this demonstration. I have an Ethernet connection between my PC, a 7 inch smart panel HMI, and MP3300 IEC machine controller. You can see in my diagram the unique IP addresses of each device. All are on subnet 15 in this case. I'm running Motionworks IEC version 3.6. And the MP3300 IEC is running this simple program with just four global variables and a simple code to convert the data. I would like to manipulate and display this data in the HMI panel, which is right now at factory condition. The first step to getting these variables into the HMI is to mark the OPC property for each of them. So let's get out of debug mode and look at the global variable list. And you can see each of these variables has the property OPC. I'll check that. These marked variables will be accessed by the HMI using the PLCI communication protocol. Standard Modbus protocol is also supported by the HMI, but you'll find that PLCI is much faster and a lot easier to use. Additionally, PLCI supports structure data types. So let's mark a structure like uh, PLC task one for access over PLCI and download this change to the controller. Okay, let's import into the Mavicon project. I'm using Mavicon 11.6. Okay, let's start a new project with WinCE platform. I'll name it Quick Start in the default folder. And next, we'll keep the users at default. And next, here in AdCom driver, let's go down to Yaskawa and select the PLCI driver. And next, here we can enter the default screen size for the seven inch HMI is 800 by 480. And you can change your color to there, Yaskawa Blue. And next, data logger and recipe. Let's just leave that at default. Alarms, leave that at default. And finish. All those settings can be changed later. The next window to appear is to set up the PLCI driver. You don't have to change any of the general properties, but the MPIEC controller is considered a station. So go to stations and add and expand to type in the server address. The address of the controller was 192.168.15.84. That's the controller, not the HMI. And under general, just change the name to whatever name you want for that controller. I'll just call it MP3300 IEC. And OK. And OK, that's it. Here's a prompt to import tags. Yes, this is the part we wanted to get to. And since my PC is connected to the controller, the easiest thing to do is click get PLC tags. And here are all of the global variables that we had used in the project. You can see PLC task one was imported as two structures. You could add a prefix to put the name of the controller in front if you had more than one controller, that could be helpful. And now if you're not connected to the controller, you could still browse to find the MWT file for your project and import the variables from there directly. Now select all the variables you want. I'll do select all and import. You can find the variables in Mavacon under real time DB variables. There they are. You can always get back to that variable import page by expanding the COM drivers and using right click to import if you have trouble with this window, you might want to also look at the COM IO driver settings and you get back to that stations window. 
uh, be sure you have the right IP address. Okay, let's make a simple screen. In the Project Explorer, there are no screens yet, so we'll right-click, add a new screen. Screen 1's a great name. Now I'm going to put the Project Explorer here, pin that one. And the properties is hiding on me. I'll make that one a little bit wider. And pin it to. Buttons and lights, however, are found in this toolbox window on the right-hand side. And let's start with a button. How about a yellow rectangular button? I'll just drag that into the screen. I want to turn on this HMI test contact. So I'll drag that variable from my HMI variable list right onto the button. Maybe I want to call this button enable, so I can click on it, enable. And you can do things like adjust the text size here, pretty easy. I'd also like some kind of a lamp on the HMI to show the status of this test coil. That would also be under toolbox, LEDs, lights, and how about a green light? I'll call that status. And I could drag the test coil onto status, but there's another way that you should know how to do, and that is to look at the properties on the right hand side for that object and go to command state variable and click the ellipsis. This brings up the tag browser. It's pretty easy to filter a long list by using wildcard characters like the asterisk and find the variable that you want. So there's test coil OK. The result is the same. Now to display or edit uh, LREAL data or integer data we should use what's called an edit box. Under toolbox, you can go down to objects and choose edit box display. Drag that one in there. And I don't have very many variables, so I will just take that uh, variable and drag it on there. Since this is an LREAL data type, I can change this format value to show a .xx for two decimal points. I also notice there is a max and min value. And I'll do this again for the integer, another edit box. With font size 12 seems to work good here. And for this one under style, I'll make it read only and take off this spin enable. That's the little arrows on the side. The checkbox here applies that. You can see it looks a little different. One little trick here for neatness, you can select your items and go to layout object alignment, distribute object space, and make some rows and columns here. Usually that helps a little bit. You can also try to center them or deselect one of them and make them the same width and center. Maybe I'll center this one here by itself. All right, that looks pretty good for a quick start. And actually, I think I forgot to drop the variable onto this edit box. So let's find that one here. Here we go. So before we send this to the physical HMI, we can test it right here in Mavicon using the simulator called Start Project. Yes, you want to save. This launches the on-screen runtime simulation. You click OK to accept that. And let's test it out here hit enable, the code sees that, and status reflects that. If I try to increase the value here, it's reflected in the controller, and enable moves that over, converts it to an integer. I could try to uh, put in a different value and see what happens there. Seems to be working. This runtime simulator is convenient for testing screens during development, especially if you don't have a physical HMI at the time. But we do have it, so now let's run this same project on the Smart Panel hardware. I'm showing the Smart Panel screen through the VNC viewer. Power on the HMI, and when you see the blue boot screen with these two gray buttons, you want to press Main before the counter expires. 
Here in main, there are a number of things you can do, and the most important is to set a static IP address. Go to Settings, Land Settings, and open that existing connection. Go to Specify an IP address and put in a suitable IP address. When you enter that, hit Return, Exit, and press OK to save the settings permanently. You may wish to open the control panel and set the date and time, for example. Otherwise, just press back until you get to the main menu again. Next, look at Auto Start. There are a few settings under the Auto Start menu, and let's focus on the bottom first. You might as well check all of the boxes under Auto Start. VNC Server allows you to use your computer to access the HMI, like I'm doing right now to record this video using VNC Viewer. Mavicon TCP Upload Server must be selected so that you can upload the project from Mavicon. Auto Start VIPA Startup causes the HMI project to load automatically. Up at the top, this project path parameter refers to the project that will load when the smart panel powers up. And you want to replace whatever is in here by default with your own project. But we can't do that right now because the project has not been uploaded. So back in Mavicon, go to this icon called Upload Project to Device. You set the server to the IP address of the HMI. I also take a look at the Upload Device Path and you can browse to find the flash disk MOVPRJ folder or really any folder will do. And click Upload Project. Now there's warning about there being no startup screen, and that's easy enough to fix. So click Note to stop uploading. We'll close it. To set the startup screen, go to the Project Explorer. Click on the top of the tree, and you'll see in the Properties windows a startup screen. Click on the ellipsis box to the right, and choose the screen that you want. Now we can try to upload again. Everything is still set. Upload project. You'll be prompted to select a speed. Just click close. Project is uploading. You may also be prompted to install a PLCI driver. You should accept that too. Now back to the HMI itself. Since that project is loaded into this directory, let's go find it. There it is. And now we can back all the way out to where we came into this, and instead of clicking main this time, press on start. And now we have the physical HMI communicating to the MP3300 IEC controller in the same way as before. Now, if you have any changes in the future, it's a lot easier than the first time. You could uh, make your changes, go back to the upload screen, upload again, close. You would click yes to all to overwrite the project and start device project will immediately update that on the HMI. Thank you for watching this video and for more training on Yaskawa Motion products please visit www.yaskawa.com.